Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my speech is about peace. Peace is a really important aspect in our lives. Some may not realize how important it is, but I'm sure that most of you in here do, because most people who value peace are the ones who lost it, and I'm one of them. I have faced many difficulties in my life, such as death threats and finally being forced to leave my country. I had to leave my country for a reason that I have never accepted. The people, in my, the, my dad still ashamed to say that the people in his neighborhood didn't accept him because of his religion. At an early age, I realized the importance of peace. I had a rough childhood. Where I lived, wasn't safe. A suicide bomb once exploded two blocks from my home. Many times, I have seen, have seen the fear in my dad's face that he might lose me one day. I'm glad that I'm in the US now. I'm glad that I'm safe. But I will never forget the ones who still suffer. I will never forget the ones who still live in Iraq. As you can see, the red circle is where I live. And the green circle is where the bomb exploded. And now I'm going to show you some interesting facts about the situation in Iraq. According to statics.com, the number of people who died from 2003 to 2006. 2006, it was the highest rate, and this is the same year that I had to leave my country and go to another state. And as you can see, the rate went down in the year 2009. This is the same year that we went back to our state. And in 2014 is the year that my, my dad decided to go to the United States. The United Nations report indicates in 2006 that nearly 100 women were widowed each day as the violence reached its peaks. As you can see, this is the picture of a woman who carries her child in a picture. According to the IDMC, Internal Displacement Monitor Center, estimated that at least 3.3 million, million Iraqis were, were internally displaced at the 31st December of 2015. And this is the pictures. It shows that people are fleeing from the state of Muni. A report on the survey published by the, by the BBC estimate that these rates correspond to finding that between 800,000 to a million Iraqi children have lost one or both of their parents. And this picture is of a boy who lost his mom and he drew her and he slept beside her. I want to say that this child haven't done anything wrong in his life, except that he born in a society that doesn't value peace. And now, I want to ask you to close your minute for a minute, please. Close your eyes for a minute. Imagine someone that you really love. It might be your mom, dad, brother, boyfriend, or anyone. You can remember all the memories, the old memories, the good memories you have with them. Now, imagine that they are not in your life anymore. And now you may open your eyes. Now I can say that give you a little bit of what this boy felt. So how can we solve this? There are many ways to make our world more peaceful. One of them is educating people around the world. Education is the key for many problems. Lack of peace is the problem. We can be different and respect those, different, those differences. Educating people about how much other, other people's lives matter and that nothing can replace a person's life after she or he dies is really important for information to share with others. We must make people think more deeply about humanity. To truly understand that by killing one person, a family is destroyed. Everyone should think a hundred times before she makes that kind of decision. And that's my favorite quote by Malala. It says, I truly believe the only way we, we can create global peace is not, is not through only educating our minds, but our hearts and our souls. And now, I want to ask you a question. Where's your race? Black. Asian. Okay, I hear black, okay. Asian. Asian. Okay. I'm sorry to say that all these answers are wrong. And our race is the human race. And we, we, don't, we shouldn't separate ourselves by names. 
That's why we should educate people about how there's only one race on the planet Earth, which is the human race. Also how the pigment in the human body that doesn't determine how the person intelligent or good he is. Also, we must educate the people on how to disagree respectfully with others and how we can have an open mind so we can learn from other people, regardless of how old they are or what their race or where they came from. These are teachable skills. We should teach them in our schools. Please, I need everyone to pay close attention to this part. If you want to contribute to stop the violence in the world, here are the sim here's some simple steps that everyone can do from his place of being of being human being. First, first step is show love to everyone at school, at work, at home, no matter where you are. Just smile and be kind to others because kindness is the language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Second step is be patient with others because patient is, the, is not the ability to wait. It's how we behave while we are waiting. The third step the third step is if you see something wrong, the police have the first to step in and stop it. And don't say it's not your business. Finally, I want to say that no one is born with hatred inside him. And people with racism, hatred, and violence are taught by others to do so. So why can't we teach them love, kindness, and hope? I want you to think that think every time you are mean to someone or you are humiliating someone because these simple things can build up and have negative impact on others. So please, my last words for you is show love, show kindness, and thank you.